Hi, this is Katherine Hansen. I'm going to be doing something a little different today. I'm going to be talking with Richard Kerr of the Bulimia Help Program. He and his wife, Allie, founded this program, and it's just been so amazing and so helpful to people who, who I've spoken with. And Richard and I share a lot of similar ideas about bulimia, and we both view bulimia as, as really a reaction to self-imposed starvation and, and restrictive dieting. And both of us, you know, have some, our thoughts have been moving in similar direction. And we both view this as really positive thing in the field of eating disorders that we're really moving away from viewing it as an emotional problem, as, as a disease, and really something that we can control and that we can move forward from with just some simple steps. And, and Richard does a great job in his program of guiding people through this. And I actually had him um, do a guest post on my blog last year around this time about um, resisting urges. He talked about a four-step technique for resisting urges, which was really helpful to people. So I wanted to have him back. And instead of writing, we thought we'd do a little video today, um, part of his w webinar he's gonna share with us. He's gonna be talking about um, the other huge component of recovery, which is um, giving up restrictive dieting and really learning how to eat normally and learning how to nourish your body. Because without that, you're not gonna be able to resist the binge urges. They're gonna continue to come and they're not really gonna go away. So I'm really excited to share what to, for him to share what he has to say. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Richard. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for that introduction. Um, I just want to stay off the bat. I've been a big fan of your work and the Brain Over Binge book for years. It's a fantastic, revolutionary book. And so many of the people we work with um, come to us with praise about your book. So, so congratulations there. And I'm honored for today to have a chance to talk to all your followers because we've got a lot of great information today. Uh, I think I've got like nearly 100 slides to go through. So um, we need to go through them pretty quickly. Lots of good, helpful stuff. And hopefully, um, hopefully, it'll be of good interest to your to your readers. Okay, so what are we going to cover today? So what we're going to do, talk about is start off with a little bit about me and who I am and what we do, and then we're going to, going to discuss the biggest myth in ED recovery. Um, we're going to talk about how you can recover without unnecessary weight gain, and I know this is such a big concern for so many people. And um, we're also going to talk about a new approach to eating disorder recovery. And then finally, at the end, we stick around with a free gift, which is our recovery checklist, which is a pretty helpful week too. Okay, so who am I? Um, me and my wife, Ali Kerr, we're the founders of BlimiHelp.org. And this is an organization that provides support and guidance for sufferers of bulimia nervosa and binge eating disorder. Um, my wife, Ali, suffered with bulimia for 10 years of her life. And it was, it was pretty intense. She was binge purging up to 10 times a day. And she had all sorts of horrible side effects she lost a lot of her teeth and you know she was weak and tired and, and she really turned to me for help one day and at the time i didn't realize she was suffering that's that's how well she headed to me but you know we both decided to seek help and support together and at the time it was so difficult to find any sort of real help our local doctor is a nice person but it just wasn't much use and all he did was recommend antidepressants or else he put us on a waiting list to see a therapist in nine months time which wasn't much use for us at the time. So we decided to take matters in our own hands. We started doing our own research and really looking to understand what causes eating disorders and how to recover. And it sort of sent us down our spiraling path where we end up doing nearly two years of research on this. And we tried and tested so many different types of methods, but eventually we started to find core ideas that started to work to make an impact. Ali applied these ideas to her life and she started to notice a dramatic reduction in her binge urges. And within three months, she stopped binging and purging. And within 12 months, she considered herself fully recovered. It was absolutely remarkable. So we were blown away by this. So we created the website, blamehelp.org, to share this story, to get that information out there. And it quickly grew to be one of the most popular programs online. We then published our book, The Blame Me Help Method, last year on Amazon. It's now got 66 reviews, five-star average. I know it's not as impressive as Brain of Revenge. I think you've got something like 240 reviews, Catherine. Or yeah, it's been out for a long time. Yeah, but it's, well, it's still, it's, still it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Well then, um, but yeah, so we're really delighted with that. And our program's recommended by, you know, professors and doctors and charities around the world. But most importantly is our success stories. And like Catherine, we, we're using this alternative approach to recovery. We're looking at it from a different angle and the results are in the success stories. And this is what's most important. Since 2007, we've had over 13,000 people come through our program and um, people who have tried and filled at every other type of recovery. People have suffered bleeding for 20 years or 45 years and with one lady recovered at the age 70. So it's been remarkable and it's a wonderful journey. And we now spend our days coaching people from all corners of the globe on how to recover. So you could say we live and breathe and dedicate our life to recovery. So, so that's who we are, that's where we're about. So this is something we're genuinely passionate about. So 
let's get into this. Um, let's get into this approach, and please try to keep an open mind here, because um, it all makes sense in the end. Because there might be some ideas that you're not new to, or, or fresh ideas on recovery. So a new approach to eating disorder recovery. The first thing I want to talk about is this phrase: "Your eating disorder is not about food; it's about feelings." Now, this is something you hear absolutely everywhere. In fact, I was at a meeting there last week, and they were talking about this. Uh, and to be honest, it just makes me angry. It really does, because this is just not true. Eating disorders have a lot to do with food, an awful lot. In fact, I would go as far to say that eating disorders are mostly a physical, biological condition. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, most people with eating disorders are living in a chronic state of starvation. Now, this isn't just people suffering from anorexia. This includes people with bulimia and binge eating disorder. I know you may feel like you're eating a lot of food with each binge, but if it's followed by any sort of food restriction, such as fasting, dieting, excessive exercise, laxatives, vomiting, there's a good chance that you're not getting the nutrition your body craves. You're still malnourished. And other factors such as unbalanced meals, chaotic eating habits, and poor digestion can really compound on this. And any form of restriction at all after a binge can keep you malnourished. And this means when your body is malnourished, your body goes into something called starvation mode and your metabolism slows dramatically. Look, I, I know this sounds kind of crazy considering people with bulimia and binge eating disorder tend to eat a lot of food, but it's true. Okay, so... If your body's in starvation mode, what difference does that make? Why is this important? Now, this is the really, really important, but this is the key part. Many of the symptoms that, this is what studies show, that many of the symptoms that might have thought to have been specific to anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa are actually the results of starvation. Another study has shown that the effects of starvation are incredibly similar to that of eating disorders. In 1944, a famous scientist, Ansel Keys, conducted a large study that proved that every single behavior that we associate with bulimia nervosa and binge eating disorder can be accounted for by a restrictive diet. Simply put, research has shown that a restrictive diet, and remember binging, fasting, and purging are a form of restriction, can lead to every single symptom of an eating disorder. Okay, so let's go into this a bit more detail to really understand this. So let's look at these side effects of malnutrition and starvation mode. <clears throat> now, as I go through these side effects, I want you to ask yourself, do any of these look familiar to you? So the first one to look at is powerful urges to binge on food. Now, just like holding your breath creates massive urges to breathe, restricting your food intake causes massive and some would say scary and terrifying powerful urges to eat lots and lots of food and this is actually a basic natural human survival mechanism there's nothing wrong or weird about this type of hunger this is happening because your body thinks that you're in the middle of a famine and it's doing everything it can to ensure you're eating enough food okay let's look at the second side effect cravings for energy dense foods your body wants calories, so it craves those energy-dense foods. This is why things like you know cheesecake and chocolate can be so appealing for you. The third thing is an increased taste response to sugar. So normally where too much sugar would make you feel sort of secondly sweet, now it seems that you can never reach the point where sugar isn't desirable. And this is actually because your body has increased your taste response to sugar so you can eat more of it. It's just another clever way of your body of getting more calories in. Number four is an insatiable appetite. You lose the ability to feel satisfied, and this can feel really scary, where normally you would feel too full. Now it seems like you're able to eat and eat and eat and never feel satisfied. The fifth side effect is food obsession. Food is all you think about in going and driving your car and going to and from work while studying, while watching TV, while chatting to friends. You may even have food-related dreams. And six, cravings for stimulants. As your energy levels plummet, you turn to stimulants such as coffee, tea, diet sodas to keep going, or is it a defense against giving in to food? And number seven, and this is the really interesting one, is changes in your brain chemistry. Whenever you restrict your food intake, you also suffer from a host of mental side effects too. So let's go into this a wee bit of detail. So large-scale studies, large studies from Harvard and Oxford universities 
have shown that people on restrictive diets can significantly deplete their serotonin levels within just three weeks. So as the brain continues to be starved, this leads to psychological problems such as obsessive compulsive disorder, distorted body image, depression, anxiety, general moodiness, poor motivation, and the, the list goes on. You know, more side effects include feeling nervous, anxious, apathetic, withdrawn, impatient, self-critical, moody, emotional, depressed. <clears throat> But the really good news is that in recovery, 100% of those psychological symptoms can be reversed. Okay, so back to that question again. How many of these side effects look familiar to you? How many of these do you recognize as something you've experienced? If not these ones, perhaps these ones, there's more side effects to restrictive eating. Feeling tired, feeling cold, feeling hungry, difficulty concentrating, impaired judgment and comprehension, dizzy spells, visual disturbances, ringing in the ears, tingling and numbing of the extremities, stomach aches, body aches, headaches, trouble sleeping, hair thinning, skin going dry, and then the list goes on and on and on. Now, the really, really, really important part is these are side effects of food restriction, not an eating disorder, not your personality, not your emotions. And that's a powerful thing to take on board. Now, these side effects help to explain why studies show that dieting is a primary trigger into an eating disorder. These also explain why severe dieters, dieters have already begun the process to an eating disorder. And it doesn't even have to be a severe diet. Two thirds of new cases of an eating disorder come from those who dieted it moderately. And it makes perfect sense. Less food equals more hunger. More hunger equals more frequent and stronger binge cravings. More frequent and stronger binge cravings equals more binge episodes. Look, this leads us to the simple conclusion that food restriction or dieting precedes the vast majority of eating disorders. Or, more clearly, diets cause eating disorders. Or another way to put it, food restriction causes eating disorders. This isn't conjecture. This is a scientific proven fact. Now, the really important thing to keep in mind is this. This has nothing to do with your upbringing, your personality, or your emotional state. If the healthiest, happiest person on the planet restricted their food intake, they would make themselves susceptible to having an eating disorder. And again, we're going back to this statement, your eating disorder is a physical, biological condition. Remember I told you to keep an open mind? Well, hopefully, you know, this is starting to sink in a bit. <clears throat> so let's take this a bit further. You know, this might also help to explain why tradi traditional treatments that focus only on the mental aspects of eating disorders aren't very effective. If your eating disorder is mostly a physical condition, you can't possibly think yourself better. Try thinking a broken leg better. It's not going to get you very far. And this is something, actually, this was in your book, Catherine, um, this point and I loved at the time. There is no scientific evidence supporting the idea that resolving underlying, underlying psychological problems leads to recovery. So that's why it's so difficult to overcome eating disorders by focusing, focusing on mental aspects alone. And I believe this is why so many people fail at recovery. Okay, so if my eating disorder is mostly a physical, biological condition, why does that matter? Well, this matters because this is good news. Your inability to stop binging is not based on some character flaw. The reason you cannot stop binging is because your body is malnourished, which has in turn triggered a primal urge to binge on large quantities of food. Also, you can't Stop, you can stop blaming yourself for your eating disorder. Chances are there was nothing wrong with you before you restricted your food intake. And if you've never restricted your food intake, you would never felt compelled to binge on food in the first place. And you wouldn't have developed bulimia or binge eating disorder. You are normal. Yes, you are very, very normal. You're just experiencing the very natural and normal side effects of a restrictive diet. You're not weak, you're not broken, you're not faulty because you cannot stop binging on food. Now, Guys, I just want you to take a moment here and just think, what if this was true for you? What if there is nothing actually wrong with you? What if you're absolutely perfectly normal the way you are? And what if you're just experiencing the natural and very normal side effects of a restrictive diet? How would this make you feel? How would this change your view of yourself? Can you see how empowering this approach to recovery is? So I want you to ask yourself a question. Did your eating disorder begin with some form of restriction? Did you restrict your food intake? Did it perhaps start with a diet or some sort of diet plan? 
If the answer is yes, then it's perhaps time to accept the fact that food restriction is responsible for trapping you in the dark world of eating disorders. And the really big point is this, you can recover. And here's why. Unlike a mental condition, we can follow practical, clear-cut steps to heal a physical condition, and this makes recovery easier to achieve. To recover, you need to remove the starvation state. You need to teach your body that the famine is over. To do this, you need to provide your body with regular, balanced, adequate food. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we use the Blimey Help Method Recovery Permit, and this is a very simplified model of our recovery. And the first stage, stage one, is all about rebalancing your body. And this is exactly what we're talking about here. It's all about you know, training your body to respond to, process, and be satisfied with normal portions of food. Now, I must stress, this isn't the only component to recovery. There is stage two, which is we call diffusion and binge urges. <clears throat> and this is where you become more forgiving and accepting of your thoughts. And this really ties in very closely, Catherine, to what you do in Brain Over Binge. Um, so these two elements work really well together to form, I think, a really strong basis of recovery. Um, so I just want to stress that as well. There is the component as well, the mental component, that you work really well with your book, Brain Over Binge. So that's all about diffusing binge urges. But the first stage we look at right now, because this is there's only so much we can do in this webinar, is rebalancing your body. <clears throat> and this is all about you know undoing the damage of the physical restriction. And we can do that by following a structured eating program. And we do this by providing your body with regular, balanced, adequate food. Okay, so the basic principles of structured eating are, now there's quite a few notes here, but I just want to stress, you don't have to write this down because, like I said, there is a checklist at the end that we, you can download that has all this information on it. But these, this is the really important bit, okay? So the basic principles of structured eating are this. First of all, you want to start eating three meals and three snacks a day, every day. Secondly, you want to leave no more than three hours between your meals and snacks. Thirdly, you want to make sure your meals are balanced. So you want to eat a portion of carbohydrates, fats, and protein for each meal. Number four, and this is the most important point, is you want to increase your portion size until you're eating your recommended amount of calories. Now, these are the four basic principles that form structured eating. There is more elements to this, but again, we want to keep it simple for this webinar. Now, what you can expect by applying these principles to your life is this. There's so many benefits, it's hard to take in. First of all, it'll help undo the damage of malnutrition. It'll help you to stop restricting your food. Structured eating will help you to feed your body the nutrition it desperately craves. It'll help rebalance your blood sugar levels. It'll help kick start your digestive system. It'll help increase your metabolism. You'll help to normalize your hunger, normalize your satiety, dramatically reduce your urge to binge on food and help you relearn normal eating habits. Wow. That is just profound amount of benefits from that. So it's, I would actually go as far to say this is the single most powerful thing you can do to help you recover fully. Structured eating forms a solid, stable foundation that you can base the rest of your recovery on. <clears throat> now, the important thing to bear in mind, though, too, is structured eating is only a temporary stage. This is not the way you're going to eat for the rest of your life. It's not realistic or healthy to stay on a meal plan like this forever because at the end of the day, eating really should not be that perfect or inflexible but think of this as like an early stage um, as like having training wheels on a bicycle you know it offers you the support when you need them but after a while when you have the confidence and the ability you can you can let go of the formal structure so the big question that everyone asks of course is how much should i eat um so for this chart you see in front of you here this is from the mypyramid.gov and it helps to determine your optimum daily calories and if you restrict a lot you may be surprised at the amount of calories your body needs now I know these figures for many people are shocking, but remember, these are the U.S. government-approved guidelines for calorie intake for optimal healthy, healthy living. And in fact, I would go as far to suggest that, you know, these are quite low on the low scale. You probably could do with more in the higher end. But if you've just learned, for example, your body needs 2,400 calories per day, and perhaps you're eating around 1,000 calories, then you know that you'll need to add a significant amount of food to your daily intake in order to curb those binge urges. And I personally believe that anything less than 2,000 calories per day is not enough for people in recovery. Okay, so now the next biggest concern when we bring up this point is hold it, won't eat in food, lead to weight gain. Thankfully, guys, this is one of the biggest myths in recovery. 
Research shows that most people with bulimia and binge eating disorder who are in the healthy weight range when they start and who adopt regular eating habits and don't purge, i.e. a structured eating program, end up within one kilogram of where they started and some even lose weight. Now in recovery, initially you may experience some temporary weight fluctuations, but once your metabolism fires up and it always, always does, there's no research that ever proven that your metabolism doesn't recover, it will start to burn those extra calories. And the thing is, your metabolism counts for a massive two thirds of your energy expenditure. So any change at all can make a huge difference in our ability to burn calories. OK, so the next question is, what weight will I be if I stop restricting my food? There's a few things to take into account here. So if you're underweight at the start of recovery, you may need to be prepared to gain some, I guess you call it needed weight. If you're overweight at the start of recovery, you'll likely lose some weight during recovery low the weight loss uh, does tend to be gradual so you do have to give it time you know six months seven months eight months now if you start within the normal weight range for your height then the chances are that you end up at a very similar weight once you're fully recovered but to get a really good understanding of where your weight will reside after recovery we need to explore set point theory so set point three what's this well your height is your height it's the way you were born, and there isn't much you can do about it, so we just tend to accept it. Well, the same principle actually applies to your weight. Our weight has a natural genetic set point, and this set point can range, can swing between five to 10 pounds throughout our lives. Some of us have a heavy set point, some of us have a lighter set point, but most of us are somewhere in between. Your body strongly defends your set point, so going below or above your natural weight range can kickstart your body into a battle. So set point theory helps to explain why your body resists any weight change and why it's so difficult for most people to become extremely thin. So the next big question everyone asks me is, so what is my set point? And that, that's a good question. And it can be difficult to tell. If you've had a neat disorder for a long time, it can be challenging because your weight might fluctuate. But Absor observing your weight patterns over time can give you an indication of whereabouts your natural weight be. If it's gone up and down dramatically, then your set point is somewhere in the middle. Um, genetics plays a role, so ask yourself, what kind of body type does my mother have or your father or other family members? If your parents are heavy, then the chances are that you'll never be model thin as your genetic makeup is a strong determinant of your body size. But what if I don't want to live at my set point? What if I want to be stick thin? Look, this is something we have to really take on board and accept. The only way for lifelong happiness with food freedom to overcome our eating disorders is to actually live at our ideal, healthy, natural weight. By doing this, you're going to feel stronger, fitter, more powerful, better than you've ever felt in the entire time you've had an eating disorder. And what we usually say to people is that, Give it a shot. Give it six months to see how you feel. And if after six months you don't like it, well, you can always go back. But you know, it's like putting your eating disorder on the shelf for six months. But everyone, once they get that six months point, they never turn back because they realize the benefits and how amazing they feel by living at their natural set point weight. So again, back to this recovery permit. That's the first stage. The second stage, again, is all about diffusion binge urges. And again, like I said, Catherine's Brain Over Binge book is pretty much, this is where we tie in really close together. And it's all about acceptance and being compassionate with yourself. Um, the third stage is becoming an intuitive eater. This is where you've really recovered. You've stopped binging and purging. And now you want to move forward with your life. Um, you want to break free from the shackles of diets, food plans, food rules. And this is all about becoming an intuitive eater. I honestly think this is the secret key to lifelong recovery. And this is all about listening to your hunger. Once you've stopped restricting, once you've rebalanced your body, once you've gone through the structured eating program, within about six, seven months, you start to really get a sense of your normal, natural hunger. And you can then use that as a guide to tell you what, when, and how much you should eat. And it's an extremely powerful and extremely simple way to eat food that will enable you to maintain a healthy weight for your whole entire life. Um, I, this is an advanced stage of recovery, so you know if you're watching this, don't be thinking you're going to start becoming intuitive right now. You've got to balance your body first and, and also diffuse those binge urges, but it is so empowering. And many of the members in our program who are at long stage of recovery are intuitive eaters. Um, but again, you don't want really to kick into this stage until around roughly six to 12 months. So 
following this program, it takes around six months for the binge urges to fully disappear and a further six months to really rebuild your confidence around food. And many of our members feel as though they're fully recovered around the 12 to 18th month mark. Now, I know this is a very simplified view. There's so many factors to recovery. I haven't spoken about like relapses, bloating, meal planning, food rules, stopping purging. There's so many aspects. But for this webinar, I just want to give you an overview. And I want to keep it simple because mostly the reason why is I want to give you hope. I want to give you hope that you can recover. And there's one thing to take away from this is, is, is not new approach going, you know what, this is something I can do. This is something that's is applicable. And I'm sure Catherine agrees there is such a thing as 100% full recovery, as in complete, total, lifelong recovery. Um, many of our recovered members even say that they've forgotten what it feels like to have an eating disorder. Their brain chemistry has changed. Their inner dialogues have changed. The way they think about themselves changed. They no longer crave or desire or want, want to binge or purge on food. To them, food is just food. A, a good analogy I heard about this is in Japan, there's an ancient technique of repairing objects called kintsugi. It's the art of repairing broken ceramic bowls instead of discarding them. So what they do is they get a broken bowl and they fill the cracks with a, a gold speckled resin so that when the bowl is repaired, it makes it more beautiful and more valuable than before. And in a way, your eating disorder is the crack through which you become a more amazing person. <clears throat> Once recovered, your eating disorder can actually have a positive meaning and purpose in your life. I love this quote from Elizabeth Kluber Ross, who wrote, the most amazing people we have known are those who have known defeat, who have known suffering, who have known struggle, who have known loss, and have found their way out of the depths. These persons have an appreciation, a sensitivity, and an understanding of life that fills them with compassion, gentleness, and a deep loving concern. Amazing people do not just happen. And that's something I really want to take on board. People think that they're damaged or broken from the eating disorder, but there's so much you can gain from it once recovered. And your recovery will be a journey. Your recovery will bring you thousands of discoveries with new ones arriving each day. You will discover what calm feels like, what balance feels like, what contentment feels like. You will discover that you can easily engage in activities that struck fear into the deepest recesses of your heart. You will discover what it feels like to have an abundance of energy, a lightness of spirit. You'll discover new interests and new passions. You will discover your inner strength and self-reliance. You will discover all the amazing, fantastic things that make you the truly wonderful, loving, soulful, caring person you already are. And this is an important point. This is who you already are. Yes, you may be changing in recovery, but you're not going to become a different person. Believe me, it was holding you back, robbing you of your life, draining of your, your soul. You were born to fly and soar through the sky, but believe me, it had you shackled to the ground. Guys, you can recover, but it all starts with taking action. And that's the most important thing. We can talk about recovery all day long, but it's all about taking action. Um, to get started with my program, our, our stuff is, like I mentioned, is that free gift. Um, if you go to bleemyhelp.org forward slash list, you can download a recovery checklist. And this is basically a simple checklist to help you stop binging, stop restricting, and make peace with food. And it's based on our tried and, tried and trust principles. I'll try saying that again. <laughs> it's based on our tried and tested principles of the Bleed Me Help Method program. Um, so bleedmehelp.org forward slash list. We also have the Bleed Me Help Method home treatment program. <clears throat> this is our sort of fully comprehensive flagship program to help you stop binge, you stop purging, and to develop a normal, healthy relationship with food. Um, this is more in-depth program. This is 10 module step-by-step -step video course that walks you through the steps to recovery. It's all digital, it's all downloadable, so you can access it 24 seven online, and it's, it's literally step by step, as in nothing is left out. And I keep emphasizing this because it's so important. Um, it's like step one, do this, step two, do that. Um, it also comes with the support community and support tools, and the whole thing's 100% private and confidential. Um, but I must stress, the home treatment program has limited places, so it's only available to subscribers on our list. So please make sure you are subscribed at believemehelp.org forward slash list to get access to the Believe Me Help Method home treatment program. Um, if you're interested, if you're looking for more support, we also offer one-to-one -one coaching, and that is we can get coaching with Ali Care, my wife, and who's also the founder of believemehelp.org. She's a Believe Me Recovery coach. She's a certified nutritional therapist. She's a founder of believemehelp.org and author of the Believe Me Help Method book. 
And um, <clears throat> this is really where Ali will coach you directly on the phone each week. She'll be there supporting you, guiding you, holding you accountable every step of the way and keeping you focused, motivated and on track for recovery. It really is a powerful service. Again, this is by application only, um, but everyone is welcome to apply. If we don't have any room for you immediately, we do keep all applications on file in case future spaces open up. And you can apply at bleemyhelp.org, all one word, forward slash coaching. And in fact, just go to the bleemyhelp.org website, you'll find all those links. So that's me as a big thank you. Um, I think that's the end of my webinar. And thank you for listening. And I hope I've given you something to think about in terms of your recovery. Thank you so much, Richard. That's very, very helpful. And um, I don't know if I'm being seen on the camera right now, but I don't um, know. I just want to say a special thank you to Richard for coming to do this. I referred a lot of people to his program, especially people who just don't know where to start as far as eating. Again, I mean, the program does a real good job of, of people who don't even know how to begin nourishing their bodies to take them through step by step until they're eating the proper amount of calories and just really supporting them in their recovery. So thanks so much for being here. Yeah, no problem at all. And again, I just want to say your, your program ties in so well with it. It's such the thing to show compartment. Also, you know, we do focus on the physical aspects, but you really come with the brain side of things so well that really, you know, it's the, the, both approach tie hand in hand. And if you look at amazon.com, you see our two books are usually bought together. Yeah. Which I think it's a nice thing as well. Like, but I think it was really good to come on here and really delighted to share some of our ideas. And I hope, you know, I'm always worried about come up with these ideas that people call out. Oh, that's a bit controversial. But this, you know, this is all scientifically backed, proven ideas about how to recover and physical aspects. And it's so important to look at these points and really address them because they can make a profound impact in recovery. And we find so many people that, you know, where other approaches don't work, this does work. Um, so it's just an important thing. And have you found that yourself, Catherine, with, uh, with Brain and Revenge? When, I think your new book talks more about the uh, working on the physical aspects of recovery. Isn't that right? Yeah, my new book does. My, my other book was basically just my story. And I covered a little bit of how I was able to go about eating normally, but not as much. Um, I, I didn't struggle with it as much as a lot of people do. So this book really covers that more. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if people should know about that yet. <laughs> Oh, the book? Yeah, no, it's it's fine. I've announced it on my blog. It's just oh, it's not ready yet. It's probably some early next year. It'll be it'll be ready. And just a heads up, I've actually you sent me a, an early copy, and it's a wonderful book, absolutely amazing. Well, um, I can't wait for it to be released. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank you, right, Catherine. Richard, well, thank you. We'll wrap it up Good there. Okay. okay. Thank Bye. you.